right, so it's coming back on. Let's see. You know, Jessica's on with us. And uh, I was really, really impressed here, Jessica. It looks like um, you've, you're pretty much an, an artist at heart who's done a lot of work in the financial field. And it looks like you've, you've been there for, um, well, after about 19 years, decided to have a, a, little, a little change in path. Um, mm -hmm. But still, still kind of doing similar work, but you, you've definitely changed your role. And I'm, I'm, I'm right. definitely curious about that. Um, but also, uh, you've got a lot of insights when it comes to uh, data storytelling. But uh, I, I love the title. It's just how an artist brings design and story to data. And uh, yeah. this, is, this has always been the, the one thing that uh, everyone's always asked me. They're like, how do, how do I get my, my team to tell more stories? How do I get them to to be a bit more artistic with their work and not just very clinical or, you know, really stale when it comes to their dashboarding. So I, I'm really interested to see more. Good. Yeah. Are you ready? I think so. If, if you're good to go, I will, I will let you go ahead and start and uh, share that screen. Um, All right. Well, thank you um, for having me. Can you, See my screen? I see it just fine. Yeah, it came right up. Okay, great. Um, well, um, hello to everybody on the call today. This is exciting for me. I kind of geek out about these opportunities. Um, as Caesar mentioned, I'm Jessica Capron. I am currently a business intelligence analyst and I design and build data dashboards at Edward Jones Investments in St. Louis, Missouri, although we are a national and actually North American company. But I've been in this role since June of 2019. Never knew Tableau existed before then. So before that, I was a graphic designer for over 19 years in our marketing division. Um, yes, you heard that right, 19, despite you seeing my youthful appearance. Uh, but I hope what you get at the end of this time together is the value design and storytelling can add to your data to give it power and drive action. I'll even provide some tips and tools to help you along the way. What you're also going to get is a visual explosion of imagery slides because this is how I'm going to entertain you and keep you at the edge of your virtual seat. Um, if you see me talk about this topic before, don't worry, I've added new info and insights based on my learnings since the last time. All right. So when I meet people, I, I'm really fascinated by their past experiences and journey. Um, just like I'm interested in that card game that was just talked about. Um, I just wanna know like, how did we all get here? Um, I just gotta know the details about people and I wanna know my audience and what they're all about. And this is gonna help me make a deeper connection. Even in my project work, I, I gotta know the full story so I can create the best dashboard to influence and drive action through my work. So today I'm going to start with my story of how I ended up in the data world from a graphic design over a year ago, much less how a creative ends up in the investment world. And after my story, I'm going to share with you how well-organized design can advance our understanding of data through some examples. And I'll share with you a design system toolkit framework that we've created. And then finally, I'm going to talk about how we can bring design into your processes, even if you're not an artist. So let's get started. Just a little bit about me in school. Shockingly, my highest scores were actually in math and science. So I'm not all artsy fartsy, but I, I do love art and that was my direction. So I knew I didn't want to be an art teacher or a starving artist. So I discovered a career path called graphic design and that sounded pretty good. I got a bachelor of fine arts degree where all my elective classes outside my art major were art related. And that meant lots of art lab hours, but the flip side was I could give my homework away as holiday gifts, so that was kind of cool. I took a sculpture class where I learned how to weld. I had to actually scour junkyards for scraps of metal for free supplies. But with that tool in hand, that large, those large leather gloves and my transformer mask, I really did feel like a boss because that fire was power. But don't be fooled, 
I enjoyed the softer side of fibers where I sat at looms for hours weaving dyed fabric strands, drinking Diet Coke and popping M&Ms. And I loved it so much I took that class twice. I spent time in Paris one summer to visit all the art I studied throughout my art history classes, which were many, many art history classes. But after my junior year, I got an internship at Edward Jones. I thought I would be fetching people's coffee, making them Xerox copies and getting some mentorship along the way, you know, a typical internship. But I actually did design statement inserts that went to millions of our clients. And I even designed ads that appeared in the Wall Street Journal. I was getting real world experience and good pay for a kid. And I landed a full-time gig at Edward Jones after graduation, which was super exciting. I could get my own apartment and be an adult, you know, for the most part, because let's be honest, I just recently started making good life choices because that's what kids will do to you. As I got going in my career, I jumped straight in, decided to get a, mar um, a marketing master's so that I could understand the four Ps of marketing, which our product place, price, and promotion, so I could speak the language of my peers. I also decided that I really liked the company and I wanted to ensure I had a long career with Edward Jones. So I got my stockbroker licenses. Why not? You know, I can I can sell a stock, but I haven't. I just really thought that this would help deepen my knowledge of the firm. And I must admit that that test was really one of the hardest things I've ever done. The testing facility, it, it was hardcore, it's no joke, strip search and all, no phoning a friend, no notes or calculators Calculators were allowed, but I don't think that would have helped me anyways, but I, I did pass. And after all the school, all the tests, I kept growing in my design capabilities and my contributions and my responsibilities. And thank goodness, because as we have all known that the design world has evolved quickly, from print to digital experiences that took design to a new dimension. Think of HTML, Java, CSS, and oh my. I was going to become a dinosaur if I didn't keep learning about art direction and the digital world of web design. When does it ever stop the learning? But over the years, what I really grew to love were photo and video shoots. They were the fun part of my work that got me out of the rat race of cubicles. I got to see some really cool locations throughout US and Canada. I met fascinating people from the actors, set designers, light engineers on the set, definitely ate a lot of good food. And sometimes I even filled in as a stunt double model, even played the B-roll photographer. It was good to be the king or the director on set, but that was a Mel Brooks reference for anyone who is a nerd like me there. But I discovered that my role wasn't just to create and direct cool things, but to solve problems, to tell people stories, and to make people a part of the experience. I found that I excelled in making sense of people's whiteboard drawing concepts. I could bring those to life through design of interactive experiences. And I just discovered my love of creativity was not just design, but solving problems with others. And I can do that in any job, any role. Any chance I got, I led passionately about what I thought made our role valuable to the firm as graphic designers. We were an asset, not a commodity. And freelancers are really great at times of need, but they can only go so far and their access to information can be limited. So. I pushed our team to get a seat at the strategic table, not just sit back and be a pair of hands. We really had some great expertise to share to make our interactions with our clients stronger. My passion, my, my curiosity and experience led me to this new, this new career path in data and I had created a brand of storytelling. So here I am, a business intelligence analyst at Edward Jones, it's just, sounds so fancy. But today I'm building company performance dashboards. I'm introducing design standards and principles into our work for better user experience. Yes, think of web experience. And I'm teaching the value of design and our presentation of our data and insights and firm recommendations. 
I'm bringing knowledge and mentorship to a new group from a different perspective and point of view. This summer, I hit my one year anniversary in this role and it's been rejuvenating. I've been mentally exhausted learning what feels like a foreign language, but I'm flexing both sides of the brain and it's truly rewarding. I used to tell people that my day job was I got to color. So I used to color, but now I can write calculations that color data. I'm grateful that my leadership now, because they have the des desire to build a high performing team of diverse background experiences, expertise, it gave me this opportunity. So how did I make the change? How do you go from an artist to an analyst? I began by obviously getting some software training, on the job training through new projects. I learned a lot from my team, their mentorship, and I had to really get comfortable with vulnerability, which is really tough when you came from a place of knowing it all after almost 20 years. There are many times, there's still times I'm just saying, you know what, I don't understand, slow down, but give me a chance and I'll get there. And I am getting there. I spent the first six months in this role meeting all the associates and leaders in my new analytics division. There are over 100 people at the time, but I love meeting people, so not too difficult for me. I did feel like a spinning rainbow disco ball on display. Analytics, I have found, is a much different sandbox of people, skills, personalities in my career in marketing, and I would say much more thoughtful and introverted compared to me. Um, Zoom might be hard to tell, but you might believe me when I tell you that I did score 98% as an extrovert. And I began helping this analytics organization get better at sharing the firm data and insights through visual storytelling and all types of our communications. So just don't think about the dashboard reports that we create or even the presentations, but one pagers, even email, which you see here on the screen, all of us should and need to be data storytellers. And this was a way for me to put my expertise to work immediately. This is where we begin talking about the value of design and our data work. I listened in earlier, love the conversation about mentorship. Mentorship is a two-way street. Most mentors will tell you, they feel like they're the one that grows the most in the experience. So. I really have enjoyed um, mentorship experiences because feedback is a gift. So how do we start? How do we apply design and story to data? I, I realized quickly through presentations uh, from all of you that this is not a new concept by any means. There are lots of us that love this topic and speak to it. And I just hope maybe there's something unique in my background and point of view that will allow you to take away a new finding to apply to your work. So I think we can all agree that design that influences should be clean and organized. It should be direct, actionable. So um, hopefully you all recognize these cookies you see on the screen. Alice was persuaded to eat these cookies in Wonderland and it, it worked every time they influenced her. I like to call these cookies the OG of influence before Instagram. Another current example of Instagram that we see every day are highway billboards. Billboards should be like these cookies, if you know what I mean. They don't have a lot of time or space. They must get to the point immediately. So I'm going to do a quick little test with you guys if you're paying attention. I'm going to go to the next slide and I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. There it went. Awful. This sign company and uh, the sign, this company, they have our attention for seconds, but I got nothing out of it. Uh, I had no clue it was a restaurant, which it was, if you didn't notice. But what time are they open? And what exit, what type of food are they serving? I hope you didn't crash into your screen trying to read it. But this is so much money wasted in advertising with bad design. Now, on the other hand, these billboard designs are quickly recognizable because of a strong brand and consistency. They're truly simple yet effective, and I'd say very direct. 
I'm also very hungry now and I just remembered some things to add to my target list. Um, Got to make a mental note of that. But now that I share a little bit about my background, how I got here, and that I think maybe a little too much about highway billboards, can you imagine driving with someone like me nagging about poor billboard design down the highway? I'm kind of annoyed with myself. Actually, about those billboards, I remembered I need Diet Coke and toilet paper if that helps anybody else. But now, all that's in the rearview mirror. I'm going to share with you um, how the team I'm on has begun its journey with thinking about the story and design of data and applying all of that to our work. So let's do that by talking about data, right? How do we make people take action through our work? We want our clients to feel a part of the data and experience. We want them to interact, explore, and take action. But instead, do we find ourselves creating bad interaction by smothering them with too much data, poor design, inappropriate charts, and maybe just too much of something? What types of questions are we asking to understand their needs so we get the right interaction? Some examples. So take a look at this report and take a moment to just think about this experience. So, when I look at this dashboard, my experience, the one thing that I notice and nothing else, I can't get past it. London, done. Everything else on this dashboard has equal weight with lots of intense color, similar shapes, and I just have no clue where to start. But I'm, that headline, it is great. In this example, the report was designed to share trends and relationships between the data but for my experience, it takes a lot of effort to see those relationships between the data because you need to compare between the two different chart types. Plus, it just looks overwhelming. But with the clean design on the right that you see, it's very clear they want us to see the specific data that's noticeable while highlighting a few of the insights with those green asterisks. The designers made this easier to understand with color, the chart types, a simple statement at the top and highlighting the main insights. This next report is sharing an equation as data. Hmm. You guys seem pretty smart. You might be able to read and interpret this equation. I cannot. I bet people I work with can, so I, I got some support there, but it's also not inspiring. I'm a big fan of the Big Bang Theory. I see them write equations all the time. I have to assume they're accurate, but not enough to helps me in this experience. With the design on the right now, the equation is actually converted into a graphic that a broader audience can understand and interpret. The cars are positioned in a way to measure and compare the relationships between the four and not only can I understand this, but I'm intrigued by the visual to go into a deep dive to understand the data. The design drew me in. So how can you think about this? How can you fit design into your team? The team I'm on of designers is made up of people with various levels of technical skills and knowledge of data. We have diverse backgrounds of experience. We have marketing for myself, we have education, finance, accounting, and training. And this allows us to each develop our skills at an exponential pace together by what we bring to the table. And I get to bring design and storytelling. So before you all get nervous about how you make this work when you might not have a design background, you don't have the opportunity to hire that designer or artist, um, Maybe we should talk about some art colleges about this time. And this is when I wish I could see your faces because I'm really joking. This is not how we're gonna talk about it. I'm going to share with you some tips on how you can bring design to your data. We can all get to a design mindset if we have the desire. So my team's been researching and building a design system toolkit over the past year. It's a framework of guidance for our Tableau dashboards. It guides our users to ensure that they can believe that everything's been double checked. It's validated for the best user experience, performance and you know, accuracy of the data. And, and this can be used for tool agnostic purposes, but we have specific guidance to Tableau use. 
This will help us create a stronger data culture over time. Uh, when I searched for the term design kit, this image came up and I was like, well, why not? The point of our kits to become laser focused in our standards of design and data visualization. And so our system consists of direction on color with a primary and secondary palette. It provides direction for font color and size guidance for headers, copy text, axes and labels, oh my. It has an icon library with usage rules and foundational templates for different output uses. We built this kit off of our company brand. We collaborated with our IT user experience group and we used Tableau's research as the framework to our um, design guidance. The nice thing for all of us Tableau users is Tableau's done a lot of this work already on testing the accessibility, readability of fonts and colors. So we don't need to recreate this. Um, a reminder, I work for Edward Jones Investments, um, very buttoned up and polished. We're talking about your savings, your investments. So bear with me, this is about as sexy as it gets. So in the top left-hand corner in our design kit, you can see the guidance on color. The four big color swatches are our primary color palette. In the center here, we provide guidance on typography, and this shows proper use of size with color. And finally, on the right, we provide an icon library. All of the icons have a single purpose so that we can train our clients on their purpose so the dashboard can become more intuitive in practice. And the toolkit, we link to Tableau content to help our associates understand our decisions on guidance so we can get their buy-in and advocacy so they'll apply the standards to their work. When we take this kit, out on Roadshow to our analysts, all of our builders at Edward Jones. Um, it's great, we're met with cheers, gratefulness that we finally have standards that they can use built to guide them as their roadmap as they design dashboards. So this kit's going to help us establish an expected user experience across all of our dashboards and reports. With those expectations, we are going to build consumer confidence through a recognizable brand. We help our creators and viewers understand what great looks like, and we develop standards for design. The benefit of all of this to our team and work is the time reduction of creation provides consistency with increased perceived value and trust. It's professional and reliable, and we're going to maintain quality and integrity. So here on the screen, you can see a resource that we have for templates based on output. So possibly print or desktop use, maybe mobile. But all of these templates are purposely connected to the sample superstore data. So all of our users, based on their data connections, can access the templates and have a starting foundation to work from each time they begin a new project. They don't have to start from scratch. In all of this experience, um, it, the community is key. Um, I hear it so much. I love this about Tableau, but our team's guiding a community of over 150 Edward Jones Tableau users on how to get better in Tableau. We built a committee that's representative of Tableau users across our whole firm so we can host monthly experiences where we deliver education, the design tips from the kit, demos, resources, and shared knowledge to become data stewards of our firm. We, we asked this committee, this community for their feedback on content that they desire so we can share back out to them our expertise to help them deliver better results to inform their leaders, their clients on the data insights to help drive action. Uh, my team, we're made up of five designers or analysts, if you want to call us, but all of our firm's Tableau users, all of you, we're ultimately designers and storytellers of data, no matter what team we sit on. So we find it important to share all of our standards, our best practices on calculations, proper chart types with specific criteria and data source connections out to this community. So we believe it's important to build this community within our firm to become a thriving data culture to advance the success of the longevity of Edward Jones. In the community, we encourage the participation through conversation and sharing of work 
from all types of data and analyst roles, responsibilities. We're building data champions. I really loved the idea of those brain dates at the Tableau conference and just trying to figure out how can I replicate that at Edward Jones so we can keep sharing. But this community, this design system helps us all build our competence and our capabilities because these capabilities are going to allow the data to tell the company's story and inform leaders to become data-driven. So back to design, where do you start on a project? Where do you draw inspiration from? Even as an artist myself, I must be inspired. Coffee doesn't do it all for me. But um, I'll go to Google. I'll go to one of my favorite sharing sites. I have a Pinterest board for data viz. Um, I dig around in Tableau Public. I was out there last night looking for ideas. There's great design out there to get us thinking and a design mindset. So, you know, what is it? Imitation is the best form of flattery. Uh, you know, go pull from the inspiration. I'm gonna share an example of a specific project I worked on over the last year and how it came to life. Um, if it means anything to you all, um, we've been exploring about how uh, to use this project work uh, using the agile approach for scope and delivery. We added to our process an intentional phase to start up with a mock-up design. So a wireframe, a prototype, loose interpretation. Um, it is intentionally blurry on the screen, I, you know, confidence, security. But um, anyways, in this process, I use Adobe Illustrator to mock up. Um, I can't help it, it's from my designer roots, but you can use PowerPoint or other drawing design tools. Heck, you know, get out pen and paper. I don't specifically uh, personally wanna connect immediately to data and get married to the setup. And I encourage all of you to step back away from the data. Um, this is a concept phase that allows me to easily iterate on what the finished product should look like. My project team, we start by understanding the business problem and what the data would tell the business area and what action they might take from having this data at their hands. So by understanding this, it's going to tell me what type of visuals and chart types to use. A mock-up allows our business areas to be a part of that process to refine the data requirements necessary to get to the right output. The mock-ups that you see on the screen are actually of one design. So you can see how discussion changed the direction of design and chart types. I just went through this part of the process on another project a week ago. It's so much fun to see the client light up about the possibilities and to be included in the process. And these were some pretty senior leaders at our firm. They were smiling ear to ear to be involved in the process. So on this project I wanna share with you, this is the first dashboard of several. Look past again, the zeros and blank titles, but notice other details. The mock-up phase I told you about, it's all about drawing out quick shapes, exploring with the color that can easily be moved in seconds to get to a design quickly, because you're not attached to the data. Once that mock-up's approved, I can go into Tableau, I can connect to the data, and once I connect, I'll let you know this, I'll, very honestly, sometimes I do have to take liberties to flex that design to work with the data the way it guides me. So sometimes I go, I veer off a little of the, the mock-up, but hopefully you can see that the mock-up here on the right was our framework and roadmap in Tableau. The second dashboard in this series I put the design system toolkit I mentioned earlier to work in this full project to test its standards. I used icons, I added a footer with specific elements and began using consistent font style treatments and color. This allows the design to naturally guide our users to read and understand the data with little to no instruction. That is key to a great experience. We built off that first dashboard to create a consistent experience and their noticeable repeated elements and color story. These dashboards go together, so they should look like they belong together. I continued to build. I kept learning more about Tableau and how to use Tableau 
to bring strong design to life, to use color in a meaningful storytelling way that color can bring elements forward and draw your eye in the direction that I wanted you to go. I explored how to use containers to guide the eye vertically, side to side, sometimes even both ways to compare the data every way. Um, for somebody who had so much pixel control in the Adobe Creative Suite, containers um, can be a little tricky for me sometimes, so I'm trying to master those. But again, I'm using the same design framework and elements to connect each dashboard experience together as one total experience. So when this project closed, it became a happy family of four. It did have one single parent, the mom, and the top left intro dashboard had high level data points. And these data points, even these visuals would link to one of the other three dashboards here. So if you wanted to learn more specifically about a specific data point, it would take you to one of the other dashboards. This allows you to do a deep dive of the data to help our internal clients understand how their impact their work drives firm performance. And as the, our project team, we started to deliver each of these dashboards. It was really exciting. I mean, we heard music to our ears. The business client told us that these dashboards made them ask questions they didn't even know existed before, that they didn't even know they needed to ask. And I think that's really powerful and credence to the work we do. So sure. Um, I think these look great, but design success is not all about the cool factor, but does it drive action? And did we create something that's insightful, understandable? Is it usable and can it help us improve our business? If we can answer yes, this is really the benefit of storytelling and design and data and analytics. So for storytelling to be effective, it boils down to this. Can you articulate the why of your work, of the dashboard? And how fast can you tell the why? Sometimes we're handed the data and told to go make a visual. So instead, next time, ask for some time to seek out understanding of the ask and the objectives. What are they gonna do with this data? What kind of action will they take? And this practice is going to lead to effective dashboards that lead to understanding and action. I've spent 19 years designing marketing collateral to influence people to meet with our financial advisors to invest more money. So I continue that practice of influence with data and Tableau and with the guidance of a design toolkit. I constantly ask what and why on repeat. So I ensure that we're building dashboards that are meaningful to the client. So to wrap this up, I'm gonna just remind you of what we've learned today. So maybe we can get to some questions or comments or maybe you like this, but first question, what did we talk about? Can an artist be a data analyst? Well, you bet you just gotta come from a place of wanting to grow and expand your knowledge and skill set. I did. I'm taking my expertise to the next level and I'm learning something brand new that makes me better at problem solving and telling stories. I'd like to think that the people in data are learning from me as well to help them elevate their work and amplify their message. So maybe my story will help you think about hiring in a different way for the future, or maybe even expanding your skill set, adding um, phases to your process work. Next, why is design critical to our data work? Our messages, they can get overlooked. It can get misinterpreted. It can get ignored. So anybody can drive by our data billboard. We have heard so many tricks for, for many of you viz whizzes on tips and tricks. Color, space, fonts, they're all important to organizing and sharing our data. So keep searching for inspiring designs to bring elements into your work. Maybe even consider giving more time upfront to your project so that you can work through a mock-up to visualize the data without being attached to the data. This will create a roadmap of laying out containers, using that padding to give you room so your data is visible. When you add a mock-up to your process, it's going to allow you to ask those important questions up front that are going to help you reduce frustration later when you stumble across new requirements and ask of the data from your client. 
The design can help the client ask the important questions necessary for understanding that leads to action. The last thing I shared is how to create and use a design system toolkit to inform design direction and establish consistency across the data dashboards in your organization. Think of it as brand guidelines used by a design agency for a company brand, but this is our brand book for our dashboards. It provides us guidance and standards on the use of color, fonts, standard layout elements and application of images and icons. This is going to bring integrity and familiarity to your work that establishes credibility. And this leads to consumer confidence in reading and understanding the data. For all of us, the creators, it's going to bring clarity to what good looks like. It's going to reduce your time of creation and it'll allow all creating dashboards the ability to maintain quality through developed design standards. So thank you for indulging me in my story. My target shopping list, definitely be safe out there driving with those bad design billboards. But I hope you found this interesting, but better yet, I hope you feel like design and storytelling are important elements to dashboard design and delivery. Maybe even you can do it too with some of the ideas I shared today. If anything, I'll say this, don't be afraid of padding and spacing in all your work. Information should breathe and be seen. It's the number one piece of advice I share across the board. I won't forget you're a data audience, so I hope this drives it all home. A Stanford study found that 63% of participants could remember the stories, but only 5% could remember a single statistic. So I hope you remember this story and you're part of the 63%. If you'd like to connect, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I try to be active on these platforms, but between work and my uber passion for inclusion, diversity work, professionally and personally, and the four little kids I have at home, I might spend some more time decompressing playing solitaire on my phone, but I get those notifications. So thanks for helping me in my journey to make public speaking a part of my resume. I love this stuff. I'm done. Um, we can see if there's any questions or conversation to have with you all. So thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Jessica, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, there are a few questions in the Q&A. I'll just kind of cover them with you. Um, very. The first one is from Quentin. Very interested in further tips on how to set up a style slash font slash color guide for your com for your company. Yeah. Um, a good place to start is, does your company already have brand standards from a marketing perspective? It's a good launching place to consider. And when you need to fill in the gaps of where maybe that's lacking, again, Google, inspiration, go, you know, go explore. Um, this is definitely direction for all of your users. So. Um, as much as you want it buttoned up, leave room for flexibility and letting it come to life through the work and seeing where it should evolve. Um, our company has our marketing brand standards for what you see as Edward Jones. We have a design system for our ISUX experience group, which we worked with. We're always trying to find ways to align. So everything that we're putting together feels like one voice. Um, but when you get into a tool like Tableau, there are sometimes limitations. So you have to be able to you know, find your own path and direction there. Um, and that's when we leaned heavily on Tableau's guidance using the colorblind palette, using Tableau font, and then just thinking through what is acceptable for readability. And don't, um, you know, don't go against the grain on that. If you say your titles have to be 16 point font size, do that every time, stick to your standards and it, it'll get easier over time. So again, start, if you have a company brand, use Tableau resources, um, go, go search the, the internet for some inspiration. And if um, you feel so inclined, I'll have virtual coffee with you and maybe you can talk specifically to your 
needs. I love making connections, meeting new people. You guys all make me better. Awesome. Um, okay, how do you support creativity and innovation when you provide so many templates and consistent reporting? Um, I, oddly enough, find creativity and while having to be boxed in in templates, how to make that the best experience to wow people, let the content speak. So in the slide I shared where it showed the templates, you know, some of the things are locked in. You've got your header, your footer, but everything in between is as long as you stay in the guardrails of your design system by using the color palette and fonts, um, that's your place to play and make the data come to life. So that's really fun. Um, I'm not gonna lie, as an artist, I do have to find other outlets. I paint, I play with yarn, um, I color. So I, I find other outlets to really support me, but um, I, I would just challenge to find creativity and innovation and, and not look at the negativity of being boxed in in templates in a design system, but know that that design system is actually elevating your work <laughs> and the credibility of it. Um, and I get, you know, I said, Edward Jones, it's not too sexy, but um, how do I make it sophisticated? How do I make it cool? So I go out and I, I search all of your work on Tableau Public. I, I go to Pinterest, I, I Google, and I just keep getting inspired. Awesome. And then Quentin also said his company, I mean, kind of hoping there's a template available for the style guide. So I think that that's just something that you've probably, um, you, you've kind of, does did you like kind of pick like the best for what you wanted to do or the things that you thought would be relevant for you? Yeah, um, so a template available for a style guide. So I, if you think about it from a sense, what I love about Tableau is like, we're actually creating websites and experiences. So if you think about it in that way, think about a site map, so a hierarchy of where does somebody enter into your design system and then where are they gonna go and how do you bucket the content? So is it all about the visual? Is it standards around the data or chart types? And so when you start visualizing a site map of the categories and the sections, that'll allow you then to go to the visual place of thinking. And just like our templates for our dashboards, you're, you're right, Quentin, you're creating kind of a template for this experience. Um, so again, I would, we can talk offline or to again, look at things that already exist and maybe pull from those as a place to get started. Um, do, you, do you like the shapes? Uh, do you like clean white? Do you like reversed out and, and start building from there that the things that inspire you that you like? If it's important to stick to a brand company, um, guidance, you know, make sure that it aligns to that. And then open the dialogue, ask other people that are close to you that um, maybe could give you feedback in that experience. I, I do this all the time. We get so deep into our work that I can't see any more solutions anymore. And I don't know if I created the right solution. So it's really key to ask other people, does your experience make sense? So I hope that's helpful. It's hard to get really specific without seeing you, without having a direct conversation. So like I said, um, feel free to reach out to me. I've been able to make connections with other people through these opportunities and have these specific conversations. That's awesome. And you know, the other thing too, is that we also have um, Dr. Kevin Elder, um, who will be speaking later this evening. So if you can't watch it live, you can watch it on the replay where, <clears throat> He's going to be talking about Britain and data visualization style guides. So that might also be another resource 
for what others have done. And I think he's compiling or the Data Visualization Society is compiling a list of style guides. So that may also be a really great um, resource yeah. to check out when you know, we as individuals or as um, company, respective companies are building out our own style guides. Yeah, um, like I said, I, I'm just a year and a half into my Tableau journey, into my data journey. So each time I have these conversations, I'm a little bit further along and the support and guidance I can offer. I'd like to get to a, a place where maybe I, not just telling you the why, but uh, doing a live demo of how to put something together like this. So like I said, you guys are, you're making me better. You're raising my bar of expectations that I needed to deliver to you all and, and how I share. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, Jessica, thank you so much. This was so great. And when you have a moment, go through the chat because uh, there's a lot of praise in there for you okay. and your presentation. And yeah. everyone, just make sure you shout Jessica out on social media to let her know and others know about her talk today. Because again, these presentations will be available on the YouTube channel in January. Um, but in January. Um, and that way others will know to one, connect with Jessica, and then two, to watch her talk. Jessica, thank you so much for your time today. Thank it you. Was such a great presentation. I absolutely loved it. And so did so many others who watched it live. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right. And